Hey guys, welcome. In this video, we will look at uh, how to do a toolpath on the impeller uh, type geometry. We will uh, cover the toolpath operations, we will cover the modeling, and we also compare the uh, creating a toolpath with uh, either a variable contour, which is a simple uh, toolpath, or using a template given by the NX. Uh, let's uh, look at the two different uh, part files I pulled up here. So the, the toolpath you're looking at here, uh, let's think that we're using a slug, a round slug. The, think about a cylinder that will uh, encircle, uh, circumscribe the, the complete impeller. So it's going to be a round slug. Use a cavity mill to rough out the toolpath. Okay, so if you look at the slug, this is the round slug. You're going to use a cavity milling to rough, rough out. And then uh, use a variable contour to start cleaning up all that there's a the splitter and a blade geometry right so this one type of toolpath now there's a template given in nx if we had to use that now we can use all this uh, the template to make it easier to select the toolpath so the second thing is we can instead of using a complete uh, round uh, uh, slug as a cylinder let's think about using a blank just been uh, turned in a turned to the the shape in the on a lathe okay so turning uh, turning the slug uh, the pre blanking on a lathe to make it easy for uh, go and uh, to make the milling uh, milling operations go faster now we'll go back to the uh, so goes to go back to the uh, uh, modeling Let's say how to create a, um, a concept impeller geometry. So right here you can uh, see the curve. Then we can uh, select uh, the curve on surface toolpath. Use the law extension to make this geometry. The, uh, the surface highlighted in the yellow and uh, thicken, apply the thicken to make that okay and then we can uh, do the pattern to do a circle pattern to come up with a uh, six more instances right and then now uh, for a splitter geometry you do the same thing use the curve on surface pick up the so it's all based on the the first curve let's go back and uh, go to go to the history let's say right so these this is here too simple geometry to make that the impeller right it's all when it comes to that when you do a cut section right in the middle so it's a, it's a blank geometry where you can uh, okay is this is a cut section uh, main geometry so now i'm going to make it make it a uh, rotate around an axis okay so now I can hide all the chosen sketches so far, right? That's what you got. You, you can come up with now, right? So now you can go back and select a curve on surface, right? So it's basically it's a spline. You have to pick up the. You got to know the points where to how how it uh, goes around on this uh, surface. So you have to go 80 parameters. Such a simple thing, right? So just just a face of first spline. Pick the face. Pick the points. Right? Points one, two, three. Now you can uh, do the lie extension to make it a surface, which you can uh, use a thicken to make it uh, give the right thickness for that uh, for the blade, right? So basically it's a simple law extension right you select the curve select the curve we just created the spline right then uh, the face then give it a the cubic select a lot type to be cubic right you have a different linear cubic and all that stuff constant select cubic give it a start start is this right right here right start then yeah end, right angle law same cubic 90 degree angle 90 angle and then opposite side extension make it asymmetry so that's basically on that 
So you have a curve, make it asymmetric. On one side, you go like 0.5. On the other side, you go cubic. Start, start at 1, right? Then you end at 0 0.105. Okay? Such a simple thing, right? Okay. So I don't want to make this video as a half an hour video. just want to make it faster. It's such a simple thing to do. You can go do it step by step. Right, you can uh, make this the main geometry, make a spline using a curve on surface tool, uh, tool path, pick three points, right, depend on the blade geometry, pick three points and make it a surface using a law extension, selecting a cubic underneath it, right, cubic and then uh, do a thick end, apply the thick end, right, so you're basically giving a thickness, giving a, giving a, give a, make the thickness to be symmetric, so you, this is a surface in the middle. You make it symmetric. See, select face thicken 0 0.50 thousands on either side, right? So this is in inches. So if it's in a metric, you have to do in millimeter. It'll be a uh, two millimeter on either side, right? Okay. Now, so basically what you need to do is right here. Let's go back to view. Make it see through. Static. Okay, we came out of it. Let's go back into the model window. Okay, bringing back into the modeling section of the NX. So now we have to pattern that. Once you got one and one blade, it's easy to pattern the geometry, right? So instance, uh, you can spread such a, such an easy thing. Specific vector vector is uh, along this axis. You know, along this this is the axis, right? That's your axis. Uh, you can pick up your uh, origin as a workpiece origin, right? And then a uh, count and pitch. Uh, you need six six instances at an angle of sixty degree, right? Three sixty divided by six, three uh, sixty degree. Okay. So you got that. Then uh, once you do that, it just like get it a solid. You, just, you don't need to do this here. Trim now to use use a trim body. Okay. So you make sure that blade, whatever that uh, the curve that you created when you extrude it, it's going to extend beyond this face, right? So you pick this face and you turn the body to this. Okay. So that's a uh, you create all this trim, and then next you got what you got to do is this all this uh, the curve that you created on this face, and you extend the and you extend the extrude the curve, thicken the curve, right? Thicken the curve, and then you do the instance around it, and you, and you trim it. Then you have to go back and unite, basically join those uh, the bodies that instance six instances that you created to the main body. Then you have to do the same thing for the. Right, create the surface, thicken the surface, do the instance, trim it, then you uh, add it to the, the main body. Okay. So I will uh, say I'll send you send you guys the model if you need it. So it's such an easy thing to do. But uh, anyways, let's let's go back and uh, do the same thing here. Go back and uh, start from here, right? Now you got these instances. Now you got to make sure that you add them all. Now once you add it, it's all become one body. Apply the edge blends, right? Now you are applying that all the edge blends right here. Okay, apply the edge blends on all the uh, either side. So now, once we got you got that geometry, you can extend it beyond to make it uniform with this whole face.
Okay. So do this go? Go? So basically what you need to create is you need to create this geometry to apply the, the variable contour tool path. Okay. So this is what you need to create. This the one in the highlight in the red is what you need to create to apply the, the tool path, right? So basically that's there. Use a divide face to divide just the surface with respect to the, the main body. Okay. So okay, in this model file, we just take it. This is our slug, is a stock that we're gonna use the slug to machine. You're gonna use the cavity mill or adaptive tool path to go and rough all the sh shape to come back to your preformed shape and then uh, start applying the milling variable counter tool path or the template given by NX to for the blade and blisk. And second, we can use a preformed blank from the lathe, and then uh, we can do the uh, apply that to your template. So now it's uh, go back to the machining uh, point of view. All right, go to manufacturing. Like I told you, simple operation cavity mill. Okay, now you have to rough it out here They're using the uh, geometry, the surface you created the green and red color. Okay, so. Let's say let's generate this tool path. Okay, that's that path that you need to select right you can see that uh, that's in yellow let's hide the blank for now okay so now you can see this is the cut surface okay the one in green that's what we're going to be plan to cut right so on the specific part select that complete solid geometry of the impeller for the cut area just to go and specify this the green uh, surface pick the surface area as your method to cut draw for the die method right use a surface percentage method okay so now if you go back to surface percentage 100 100 100 0 90 so you can see the yellow line that's highlighting over that so that's how you consign that the tool path that you want to generate it along that surface okay so if you want to go be this one beyond like say 110 you can do that you can uh, right so now we extend it beyond that we don't want that so you go can go back and put it to back put it back to 90. Okay, now for the cut pattern, select zig and give it a number of step over. You can do a lot of helical and a lot of other stuff, but you don't need all those things. So just stay with zig, right? So for a helical, if you are going around and round and round a uh, specific part profile, yeah, you can select helical and give it a step over distance, step down and step up. Okay, so now the first cut and last cut, select that. Select the numbers how much you want. See if uh, what you're liking. Now, while selecting the projection vector, it's, you got to select, okay, your dry method is surface area and you pick the surface. Then for your vector, make it normal to dry. That's your projection vector. That's how the, the tool path, the surface area is projected to that uh, dry method you selected. For the tool axis, select swap dry. 
okay and the tilt angle uh, the tilt angle you got to be careful about uh, oh, how much you uh, uh, the clearance is in the cutting zone of your machine tool that you're able to give the, the, the tilt angle we don't want to run into anything select g43 as the main uh, the main machine machining mode now all this tool packs when you use the g93 inverse feed rate which is the whole five axis machine used to use g93 is inverse feed rate uh, basically what's your degrees per minute uh, now the new all the machine controls have a uh, the rotary tool center point control rtcp tool center point control basically those are tool vectors you don't have to think about all that uh, the swing point where you have to program it to the the pivot line pivot point now you can uh, program it to anywhere anywhere you want as long as the machine tool uh, identifies all the schematics within the control right so you're using a g43.4 and 5 uh, rotary tool center point control uh, methods to make all this tool path so that you get a stable tool path with a good finish on it okay once you get that for that and then uh, so basically you are basically doing it on the opposite side the same tool path now you're gonna copy that over to the splitter right on the, the opposite side of the splitter so basically you are now you are doing it for the all the blades that you that you, that you have so that's uh, you went over the step by step geometry creation of a impeller blade and splitter and how to apply the variable contour tool pack right so now we will see how to use the the template given in nx to make the blade for the, the tool pack for the blade and blisk so the for the roughing so basically we offset the tool path uh, just above since we are not going to use a roughing tool path it's going to be all the the tool path we're going to start from a, the preformed training blank on a lathe then we're going to use the milling to achieve what we wanted right now if you look at it, let's go back and edit the, the tool path what's in it so your hub right that's your uh, hub geometry all in a margin green shroud blade okay the the one in a blue highlight blade blend splitter okay so this template is specifically made in an axe to make it make the tool path creation such an easy job for any cnc programmer now we will see the simulation now so now we'll use the the cylinder big round cylinder or slug as a stock see how to cut the impeller from this so we need to cut some uh, extra air passes the some other, some other couple of uh, tool patch we need to cut it down Also as an alternate, since we are using a multi machine, we can use a turning tool holders to go and turn the preform blank as you can see on the screen. Okay, so basically using a uh, CCMT for rough and a VCMT or a DCMT for
semi-finish and finish. Just so now you are P from blank.